for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Simply the Zest. I am Elizabeth and as usual, I'm joined today by Katie and Beth to tell us about their recipes. So Katie, tell us about your recipe that used zest. Okay, so this recipe comes from this book that I checked out from the library. The Little Swedish Kitchen, over a hundred recipes to celebrate every season by Rachel Koo. And I've checked this out a couple of times because I really like it. It's a really cute cookbook. Um, and I've been making this recipe now for like two years and have wanted to share it with you for a long time, but just never had the opportunity. So I'm really excited today to share with you Old Man's Salad. Um, I was initially attracted to this recipe because I was like, well, that's a funny little name for something. What is in that? And then I read the ingredients and it was like, oh, yes, absolutely. I'm making this. Um, so it's basically a potato salad with a couple little spins on it. So the first thing that you do is boil your potatoes and your eggs. Um, this calls for four medium potatoes, but I like little potatoes. And that is about a pound of the little potatoes. So that's what I used. Um, once your potatoes and your eggs are cool, you cut your eggs in half and scoop out the egg yolk, mash the yolk with some fresh chives and dill, some capers, diced red onion. It says creme fraiche, but I use Greek yogurt mayonnaise and lemon zest and so you use the zest of a whole lemon here so it's quite a lot it adds a bunch of flavor to this that I'm not really used to having in a potato salad and so I really liked the brightness that that zestiness brought to this salad um so then you chop your remaining egg white some anchovies and your potatoes and you mix that together with everything else season it with salt and pepper and then here's the really cool part to serve it you take little gem lettuce leaves and you spoon some on to each leaf in a little pile and then you add some radishes and i used uh, my mandolin to make the radish cuts like super thin and just arrange them I'm not, a, I can't make them look like a flower, but just with the thin slices, it does look floral when you put it on the lettuce leaf with the potato salad. And then you just finish it with some extra fresh chives and dill. And there you have it. It's really, really pretty. I have a picture. So it's just interesting because, you know, potato salad usually is not the most gorgeous thing to look at, but I loved the way that they served it, made it look really nice. That sounds amazing. My mouth is watering. I <laughs> love a potato salad, although not a super heavy one. And this sounds so delicious. I love little gem. It's like, <laughs> and then I love radish and it. I cannot wait to make this. That sounds fabulous. The lemon, the anchovies, yum. So yeah, tell me um, how much, uh, how many anchovies did you use? Let's see. So <laughs> Sorry. how many anchovies? Oh, a hundred grams. So I think it's, I think it's like a little container of okay. anchovies. You know, I think I use like a whole small container. Okay. And you chop them up. Yeah. You chop them up. Okay. I mean, I, I, I like anchovies. I, I can't say I've, ever, I haven't really purchased a jar of them. And I mean, I, I have anchovy paste. Oh Yeah. Um, I bet that you could use that and it would give you like that flavor. Yeah. I th I think that that would work actually. Okay. That sounds like a really great idea then. Yeah, so, for sure. But, yeah. I also yeah. feel like anchovies are so like, I just buy a tin if a recipe calls for that. Like it's not something I do keep around, but if yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just like, okay, this week I got to get a tin. And they're, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, they last forever. Yeah. And, you know, if I don't use them. So. Huh. Okay. 
Okay, well, Beth, tell us about your zesty recipe. All right, well, um, I'm going to tell you about what I use for simply the zest. <laughs> so I went into this recipe, I mean, when it was on our list of things we were going to, you know, our categories, I was like, I'm doing lime zest. I'm so predictable. Lemon zest, lemon bath, lemon, lemon, lemon. But guess what? Well, I was really still planning on it, but then Kurt made this lemon zucchini bread uh, over the July 4th holiday, which was last week. And we've been getting zucchini in our CSA. So, and it's also to call, it's very desserty. It was delicious. Um, it's got six ounces of Greek yogurt, lemon juice, eggs, sugar, flour, soda, baking powder, two teaspoons of lemon zest in this, salt, vanilla, and also two cups of grated zucchini, about one large zucchini. It had a lemon glaze after that's baked. And it makes two, by the way, two, uh, which was fortuitous because we had extra at home. Um, it was a cup of powdered sugar and one to two tablespoons of lemon is all the, the glaze was. And then optional, which is never optional, um, two tablespoons of lemon zest. So it had it both in the bread, which really, it was more like cake. It was, it was delicious. It was a hit. Um, and that's why I couldn't, I couldn't not share it because it was, it's perfect for right now when it's zucchini season. And also I didn't say it came from, uh, a latte food.com, L A T T E.com. Very tasty. That sounds good. That sounds like something even I would bake. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love that, like the vanilla, the lemon and yum. Yeah, it was, it was really good. The kids loved it. Um, you know, it was, it was a hit. We sh probably should have brought both loaves over, you know, to the party that we went to, but it's so funny how versatile zucchini can be. It's like, I know. Sure, let's just grate a whole zucchini and throw it in. <laughs> you yeah. Know. I mean, exactly. this is my favorite way to eat zucchini personally. So right. I think that sounds great. And the lemon sounds like a wonderful addition. Yeah. Um, also, you do have to, you know, squeeze all the liquid out of the zucchini. So right. I think Chris oh, sure, um, sure, sure. Yeah. shredded it and then waited like a day yeah, yeah. the way it worked out. But so that was it. And uh, ooh, let's hear about yours, Elizabeth. Okay. Well, I didn't make, I did not break the mold on this. I wish I'd been more creative, but I'm moving right now. So I just am keeping it pretty simple, but um, yeah, getting lots of fresh veggies at, right now. And I needed a way to just use a lot of them up. So I made a really nice pasta primavera, which familiar recipe, but I can just tell you what this one called for because it was good. Um, whatever, you're going to make a pot of pasta, but while the pasta is cooking, you have a large skillet, you are adding a red onion, a red bell pepper, and some chopped up broccoli. You just kind of stir until it's slightly softened. And I feel like this is key for pasta primavera to not overdo the veggies because you just do really still want them like pretty bright and crunchy. So I was like three minutes, maybe. Then you toss in a zucchini and a yellow squash. Again, just stir a little bit until the vegetables are kind of softened, but as the recipe says, still crisp. Um, you season with a little salt and pepper. Take them out, put them in a, your serving dish. And then in that same pan, you're adding a tablespoon of butter, a minced shallot, and four thinly sliced garlic cloves. And then you're toss or you're adding in a cup of vegetable broth, which um I never have broth, but I do have better than bouillon. So I always put that in a cup of warm water. And that's what I do now because I don't have room to store like cans of vegetable broth. So just a just a tip for the listeners. Um so you add a cup of that, you bring it to a boil, and then you stir in a half cup of heavy cream, uh, the zest and juice from one lemon. And then you just bring that to a simmer and cook until it thickens slightly. Then you are um, putting the vegetables, the pasta, and 
um, some frozen peas. I always just use the whole bag because I like peas and I don't want like half a bag of frozen peas in my freezer. Um, stir it all together and then add in some Parmesan and you garnish with up to you, but it calls for basil, parsley, and more lemon zest. I use basil and more lemon zest and um, delicious, a uh, great way to use veg. Um, yeah, uh, I love the lemon in this. Um, I would even use more next time. I might even like zest two whole lemons because that really just does brighten things up. And, um, you know, it was super easy and bright, nice summer dinner. Um, and I just love how many different vegetables you can throw in there and it's all good. So, um, I didn't say that that did come from New York times cooking. Cause I was just looking for a veg forward recipe where I would use some lemon zest and that's what I came up with. So again, didn't break the mold, but, um, it's a good one. And, um, yeah, super tasty. Yeah, it's a good reminder of because that's not something I would think of making. Um, but I have all those vegetables right now. Um, that's how it was for me. I was just like, yeah. Ah. And then I was like, I remembered as my mom used to make like pasta primavera. And I was like, what? Oh, yeah. You can just do yeah. it. Well, yeah, it sounds really summery. And I was kind of thinking the same thing. I actually have like some veggies in my fridge that I need to use like ASAP. And like, that would be a really great way to just like take care of that. Yeah. Yeah. And I know, like, I feel like the onion was fairly key for that flavor, but like, so you don't have a bell pepper, no problem, you know, or like maybe you have two zucchini, but you don't have a yellow squash. What? Yeah. You know, it's like mm. pretty flexible. I don't have shallots. But I do have garlic. I think it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can, the you can do, read the yeah. comments. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Well, I will take us out by saying to our listeners, thank you for watching Recipe Share. And be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org, where you will find the recipes that we talked about. And do feel free to share your own in the comments. Join us next time when we will be talking about vacation-inspired recipes. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making, so thanks for sharing. Recipe share, recipe share, share a little recipe with recipe share.